Hello, welcome to the channel. Today I'd like to talk about LRGB processing. This is a popular technique where you take two images, a luminance image and a color image, and by managing the brightnesses and contrasts of each, you blend them together to give you the very best possible result. Now historically this has been done in programs like Photoshop where you have two layers and then you can interact with these images independently and see in real time the blended result. Now there is a new approach that's available in PixInsight where you can do exactly the same. It uses the image blend script that Mike Cranfield and I uh, collaborated on. And that's what I'd like to show you in this video. Just recently, I put together a new tutorial about LRGB production on my website. And what I'm gonna be highlighting in this video is a very small part of that, but it's a very powerful one. The way in which you can now, with great flexibility, blend a luminance and color image together using the image blend script. Please join me and I hope you enjoy it. This data comes from Telescope Live and it served as an excellent example for me to be able to demonstrate LRGB production in my tutorial on my site. If you'd like to learn how to take advantage of Telescope Live images just like this, please check out my description down below. Now to create an LRGB image in PixInsight, you need to start by generating two images. You need to have a stretched luminance image, as you see here, and a stretched color image as well. It's important to understand that the paths that were taken to get to two of these, these two stretched images were completely different. And that's what I demonstrate in my tutorial on my website. It is that when you make these two stretched versions of the luminance and the color, they're not gonna look their best. You're not making them in such a way that they're going to ultimately look how you would want them at the end of processing. And there's a skill in not going too far and not making it overly bright and not increasing the contrast as much as you possibly could because the goal isn't to make either one of them look great. It's to make them look good when they are blended together. It's the blended result which matters. These are permanently stretched. Then you use, you know, usually you use LRGB combination where you specify the luminance here. You drag this over to the color information and you generate an LRGB image. You have a small degree of adjustment with these sliders, but they're nothing like what I'm about to demonstrate. Let me go ahead and show you how it works, but I will first show you a very important part of being able to do this in the script. So the script is under utilities, and then I go to image blend. If you do not have this currently, I'll have the repository that you can add in your PixInsight software down below in the description. So I go to image blend, and I already have the images loaded here. I have the luminance image on the top, and then I have the color image in the blend image. But you'll see that it says the views mix color and grayscale. In order to use image blend, you have to have two images that are both RGB images. All I'm saying is you just need to convert your grayscale image to an RGB image by going under image and then you go to color spaces and you convert it to an RGB. All that does is it converts this to a three channeled image with all the values being the same. So um, I've already done that. I can just step forward here. Now I'll go back to the script where it's going to be quite happy with me. There it is. And this is the blended result. I could sh Let me just show you what uh, you'll see nominally here. When you have replace here, this is what you'll see by default, is you'll just see the color image because it's, being, it's replacing the luminance. But when we want to do a LRGB blend, we use the color blending method down here. And you might think to yourself, well, I mean, that looks good, right? What's wrong with that? Well, one of the things, and, you know, maybe you could produce this, actually, with uh, LRGB combination, but one of the things that we get to do that I've always wanted to be able to do in PixInsight is to now manipulate either one of these two images. We can change the stretch 
of the two images. We can change the contrast of either the luminance or the color, and especially the color in this case, in such a way that it will change the degree of color saturation, the degree that there is a richness of color in the result. That's always been the challenge of producing an LRGB image, and it is now we have this flexibility to be able to change that in real time. So, the most important point is that increasing the contrast of the color layer, whether it's by raising the black point or by brightening or darkening colors by using the highlights and midtones here, it will change the result that you get. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more to be sure that you're able to see that I am changing things here. So, you can see that we have some color, but I can take that image that was not very contrasty initially, that color layer, right? And I can add contrast here. And by doing so, you'll see that the colors start to become much, much richer. Now, one of the dangers is, of course, at the high end, you generally don't want to use that as your contrast adjustment, because what you'll start to do is everywhere in the color image that colors are being clipped or going to white, it will show up as white here. So you can only go so far. You'll notice, yeah, now all these regions that are very, very bright have lost all their color and it's all goofy. So you can only do the, you know, a little bit of an adjustment here at the top end. Uh, you can also adjust the slider here at the midtones. In fact, even darkening the colors, look what that did. By actually darkening the color layer a bit, not brightening it, has shown us that the blended result is now rich with color. I can see beautiful H2 regions and bluish arms and so on just by manipulating the contrast of the color image. So I'm going to press the check mark here, produce this result, and then I will produce the result that would be output by the same images that would be output by LRGB combination. So here it is here now. Ignore the fact that unfortunately I do have a bit of a color bias. Here we are, we have LRGB combination, so I drag this here, same images, and it says, oh, now I need to go back. It needs to be a grayscale image, can't be a, let me go back. Gray, yes. This needs to be a grayscale image to do that. And there is the result here. So now let's blink the two. Where's my image blend? Here it is. And I will go like this, like this. Let's zoom into the galaxy, maybe. And here's the difference between this version. Notice the color of the H2 regions and, or, and the, uh, the disk of the spiral galaxy. You can see just how much more vibrant I was able to make that image just by adjusting the basically moder you know modifying the stretch of the color layer and i don't believe you can get the same kind of behavior by manipulating these transfer functions it's a very different kind of uh, knob that you're able to turn here so at the end of the day if you've ever felt that this tool just didn't offer enough flexibility and you felt stuck that once you did you dragged this triangle over and you got a result I mean, that was kind of it. It didn't seem like there was a lot more that could be done. Now there is this new space of possibility using the image blend script where you can manipulate both of those images and see in real time what the blended result looks like. I hope you enjoyed this very quick little lesson in LRGB production and uh, check out the image that resulted from LRGB uh, blending as well as some of the other processing that I did in this tutorial on my site.